Welcome to St. Andrew Presbyterian Church of Tulsa, Oklahoma. We are and I am so glad that you have chosen and joined with us and worship together this morning. And we are in the land. This is the second Sunday of Lent. So please think about Christ, his death, his preparation, and his suffering. And please join in his suffering and death and rising again. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship our Almighty God as we receive this morning's prelude. Please join with me call to worship this morning. Praise our God. Glorify God's holy name. Praise our God. Glorify God's holy name. Standing in awe, we worship the God of love. Standing in awe, we worship the God of love.
Please join with me call to confession and silent prayer. Let us pray attention to the one who is always watching over us. O oh God, you provide everything that we need, and yet we lack the one thing necessary. You restore our souls, yet we are overwhelmed by choices and exhausted by demands. You lead us in the right direction, yet we wander after trivial pursuits. Speak to us, Good Shepherd. Guide us, protect us, and lead us to the sources of life and peace. Assurance of God's pardon. Brothers and sisters, God's kingdom is near. Believe the good news. In Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. So lent to us and lent to me is a suffering and preparing and wearing. So wearing for Christ and joining suffering of Christ and and waiting for joy of his rising. So usually the South Korean Christian, who I know, not all the Christian of South Korea, but the Christian that I know, they are joining Christ suffering. So usually not to drinking with a friend, or joining party, or avoiding to go to club, or do whatever they enjoyable. So to lend to me is uh, joining Christ's death and suffering. Okay, to me. Um... Just suffering with Jesus because uh, I think Lent connected fasting, so it's to suffering with Jesus. That's it. <laughs> hmm. 
Uh, all right. Uh, I remember fasting my first time when I was 14. One day, my mom said, it's time for you to join in Jesus' suffering. She suggested three days fast to remember that Jesus was crucified and resurrected. It was very hard to me, but that year Easter was the happiest and most enjoyable day because finally I was able to eat rice. <laughs> My memory of Lent in South Korea is that we do, I do, I did it early morning prayer, which is before dawn prayer, and we have lots of worship, like Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and to remember that I also joined the fasting because the church usually recommends the church people for suffering and fasting. So fasting is my number one memory, like Songshin do. But uh, my memory of land in South Korea is we had a lot of worship. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> So, our family, even though we are in the United States and I'm the ministering of the American church, but we are still Korean and we want to do the Korean tradition. So, from March 1st, we decided to do before dawn prayer in this sanctuary from 5 a.m. until the Easter, I believe. But after that, we will do prayer in the house like before but this time you want to do the in this sanctuary 5 a.m. like do Korean tradition and then what do you want to do what do you want to do for the uh, land okay our Kim's family we're gonna do um, before down player uh, during to land uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then we also do fasting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we also do yeah. fasting. I'm going to ask first Aaron, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's time to for you, Aaron, <laughs> I think. Just one day, um, it's a suffering, uh, Jesus is suffering a uh, due. So maybe yeah. Good Friday. Yes, right. Maybe Good Friday will be a whole family. Mm -hmm. Maybe fasting day. Yeah, enjoy and, the fasting. And do as a minister, maybe I will start my fasting mm -hmm. every day, maybe one meal mm -hmm. until Easter. And usually Korean minister do whole day fasting since Good Friday, Saturday, and Easter day. Mm -hmm. So I might think about I want to join like that custom. So to us, the fasting is important for the life, but also important to join in Christ suffering. So we want to deeply join in Christ's suffering this year. Mm -hmm. And our kids too. <laughs> yeah. If they say okay, if they say okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really want to uh, experience it, that uh, Ariana Iris is beautiful and uh, enjoyable Easter mm -hmm. this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only finding egg or chasing Easter bunny, mm -hmm. but wanted to think about Christ more. Yeah. Old Testament reading from this week is Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 through 7 and 15, 16. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you, you shall be the ancestor of 
a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of multitudes of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nation of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her and move over. I will give you a son by her. I will bless her and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. We're reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 8, beginning with verse 31. Then he, Jesus, began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. Now, he said all this quite plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, but, but turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your, your mind not on divine things, but on human things. So then he called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. Those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. What will it profit them to gain the whole world and to forfeit their life. In, indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and, and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Reading from Mark chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the second Sunday in Lent, and as you heard last week in Pastor Kim's sermon, Lent begins with Ash Wednesday, a time of, of thinking about mortality, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, but also to think about uh, a repentance and, and turning our lives back to God. And, and the season of Lent is 40 days, not counting Sundays, leading up to Easter, a, a time of self-reflection, self-examination, self-denial. And yet, if you think about it, people have been telling me, I don't care about Lent this year. I mean, we have been going through a whole year of Lent, of, of self-denial. And it's true that, that the pandemic practically uh, began a, about a year ago. Our church discontinued in-person worship on March the 15th, uh, almost a year ago. 
The pandemic is still raging. The schools are still disrupted with in-person and distance learning. And when they're in session and when they're not, businesses have gone bankrupt. Uh, people are, are dealing with all manner of problems. And, and as bad as it is for us in America, uh, it is much, much worse for people overseas. Uh, there are problems, particularly in countries that uh, have a lot of employment in making clothes because that's a minimum wage job. <clears throat> and they have been laid off or fired. The, the factories have closed. People are really hurting. Uh, and then we have, besides the pandemic and the economic problems, there, there's problems of the politics, and, and if that weren't enough, most recently we've had the weather in this area. Our house, hot water froze. Now, I don't want to whine. I mean, really? I mean, I just didn't shower for a week. I didn't shave for a week. I mean, is that a sacrifice? No, no, not really. But... But it is an example of what we have been going through. We don't want to think about suffering and sacrifice and, and self-denial. And, and so I think we can especially understand Peter in the story we just read. A after Peter said, you are the Messiah, Jesus gathered the disciples around and said, let me tell you what that really means. The Son of Man will suffer and die and, and after three days re raise from the dead. What? That, that's not what they signed up for. That they anticipated the Messiah carrying a sword and, and driving the Romans out of their country and, and restoring the kingdom of God in Jerusalem. What is Jesus talking about? So Peter comes up to him and, and the scriptures say that Peter rebuked Jesus. Rebuked him. That is a word that is used to cast out demons, to rebuke a demon. How could Peter do that? How could Peter rebuke, rebuke Jesus? He obviously felt very strongly about it. Jesus in turn says to the disciples and Peter and rebuked him. And he didn't just say, uh, Peter, come over here and let me talk to you privately and straighten you out. He didn't say, here is the correct teaching. No, what he said was, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Jesus sees that Peter's rejection of Jesus' suffering and death and resurrection is is a way of tempting him to not do his father's will. He sees this as Satan's tempting. And so Peter is Satan personified here. But we can understand, can't we? We, we are tired of the pandemic. We are tired of the economic problems, of the educational problems, of the political problems. We do not want suffering, do we? And in fact, without being too judgmental on ourselves in the church, we have within the last few decades become very soft Christians. We have focused on what's in it for me so that if we don't get the kind of preaching we want, we go to a different church. If we don't get the kind of music we want, we go to a different church. If we don't get in-person worship or distance worship, we go to a different church. What is in it for me? That's all we seem to care about. 
What's in it for me? I kidded a friend of mine who posted a gruesome selfie of himself bleeding that selfies were the symbol of our culture. All we care about is, look at me, look at me. I get what I want. Look at me. Even as Christians, we have focused on what's in it for me. You know, I grew up in, in uh, North Louisiana, which was primarily Protestant. Presbyterians, Baptist, Methodist. Uh, there were Episcopalians and Lutherans and, well, some Catholics, but mostly Protestants that did not observe Ash Wednesday and Lent. It was, it was kind of foreign to me. In, in fact, in my North Louisiana prejudice, we blamed all of this on South Louisiana because it was more predominantly Catholic and they observed Ash Wednesday and Lent. But really what we noticed was they observed Mardi Gras. Now, Mardi Gras is that period of time from after Christmas right up to Ash Wednesday. Strove Tuesday is the last day of parades, parties, celebrations, balls, whooping it up. South Louisiana's motto was, let the good times roll. And they knew how to do that. Do you think about that? We Protestants in North Louisiana were prejudiced, we have to admit. But, but think about it. If you give up anything, chocolate, eating meat for Lent, does that offset the months of parties and frivolities and excesses prior to Lent? I think they, like Peter, found a way to work around that sense of sacrifice. But it's not just them back there, it's us today. We want what we want. And if we don't get it, we're out of here. We're out of here. And, and yet, listen, listen to what Jesus says. The Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. And, and then after this action with Peter, he says, <clears throat> he calls the crowd with his disciples and says to them, If any want to become my followers, Yet them, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. If you want to become a follower, deny yourself, take up the cross, follow Jesus. That's the way of Christ. That's the way of the cross. That's the way to life eternal. Not so obvious, but certainly so true. John Calvin, one of our forefathers, wrote the Institutes of the Christian Religion. This is only one volume. It's actually in four books. But he says something that I think is very helpful about this passage. In book three, chapter seven, he says that the sum, the total, the sum total of the Christian life is the denial of ourselves. And he writes on and on about what it means to be a Christian, to deny self and to follow Christ. Listen to this. We are not our own. Let not our reason nor our will, therefore, sway our plans and our deeds. We are not our own. Let us therefore not see it as our goal to seek what is expedient for us according to the flesh. 
we are not our own. Insofar as we can, let us therefore forget ourselves and all that is ours. Conversely, conversely, we are God's. Let us therefore live for him and die for him. We are God's. Let his wisdom and will therefore rule all our actions. We are God's. Let all the parts of our life accordingly strive toward him as our only lawful goal. We are not our own. We are God's. That is the heart of the Christian faith. But you know, as I was thinking about this sermon, I became aware of the problems that we can have if this can be misinterpreted, misunderstood, because sometimes people see sacrifice and don't understand what it can be. I'd like to tell you about two men. I'm not going to use their last names because I, I don't want to focus on them or be judgmental of them, but I want us to think about how this understanding of commitment and sacrifice and following Christ to the cross can lead us astray. First man's name is Madison. Madison is a young man who lived in North Carolina. Uh, he'd had problems with holding a job and substance abuse and, and other problems. And he listened to the social media and, and heard about all of these problems in Washington. He heard the rumor that there were Democratic politicians who were running a sexual trafficking ring that, that had uh, young boys trapped in the basement of this pizza parlor. A and he felt called upon to do something, to respond to, to the challenge of, of somehow setting these people free. He drove all the way from North Carolina to Washington. He found the pizza parlor, went inside looking for those sex traffickers. Of course, he didn't find anybody. Uh, there was no basement that they were supposed to be hidden in. He shot up a door and, and then gave himself up to the police. This was what came to be called Pizzagate in 2016. Just this last year during the pandemic, he was released from jail. He recognized, as he wrote the judge, that he had a genuine concern to rescue people in trouble, but that he did a very foolish thing. That should have been the end of it. But that false voice that he heard is still spreading around so that even today, that pizza parlor receives messages like pizza pedo and hey, Sir Rothschild and James, are you ready to die? James is the owner of the pizza place. The day before the presidential inauguration, protesters still, four years later, gathered there. The owner took out a tray of champagne to hand out to the protesters, and they knocked it out of his hand. It is not enough to respond to Christ's call to commitment and to give of ourselves, to follow Christ even to his death, we have to ask, whom are we following? Was this man following Christ? No, I don't think so. But he felt like he was. The second man 
is named Michael. Michael also heard the stories on uh, Facebook and other places. He watched posts of, of protest for uh, racial justice in the summer, and, and instead of being sympathetic, he became outraged, and, and he posted how he hated seeing what was happening to his country. It, it made him furious. It's, he said he wanted to kill people. And he recognized that perhaps he was getting carried away. Some of his members, not of a liberal progressive church, but of a Baptist church in Kentucky, said that he was getting too far out that he needed, he needed to kind of dial it back. He, he needed, according to his pastor, to not even look at social media, particularly Facebook, for a while. And he heard that, and he tried, but it was like an addiction. He could not give it up. He could not give up his anger. One of the other pastors preached a sermon on Daniel in the lion's den. And apparently this pastor was preaching just to Michael and the other men like Michael. Because he said in this recorded sermon, when Daniel's very life was threatened, he prayed. Daniel didn't draw a Glock, a gun. And this preacher preaching to the men said, well, you say, the men who are getting so angry, you say, well, I don't have time to pray and read my Bible or memorize scripture. But guys, the preacher said, you sure do have time to get on Facebook and trash talk. Who are we following? Who are we following? All of the false voices that are around that, that continually pressure us to, to, to do things that, that are hurtful rather than helpful. I do think, I do think we all, including myself, have, have become weak, soft Christians that, that are content with with just getting by, content with what's in it for me, content with being satisfied when God calls us to self-denial, taking up our cross, and following Jesus. I, I do believe we need to hear that challenge for all of us, but we also need to listen to what voice are we responding? Are we responding to all of these far out conspiracy theories? Are we responding to people that, that would encourage us to do violence? Are we responding to the one who gave his life for us that we can know life eternal and abundant. Madison did a very foolish thing and went to prison. Michael was the first person to break through the window in the Capitol and assault the Capitol building. And he too will probably go to prison. Are we following Jesus? Are we following false gods? In this season of Lent, think about, think about your commitment, your call, and responding to the one who came to give life eternal and abundant. Amen. Lord God, in these times of pandemic, of economic stresses, of all of the anxieties that press us down. 
O oh Lord, it is so easy to lash out, to reach out in anger and even to reach out in violence or, or to go the other way and become very passive and silent. You have called us to be faithful followers. You have called us to share your good news. You have called us to live to bring life and love into the world. Oh Lord God, we pray for your spirit to sustain us through these difficult times and to keep us faithful in following Christ. In his name we pray, amen.
Once again, we are so glad that you have joined us in worship on this Lord's Day. Uh, we pray that you'll join us again on next Sunday as this part of God's church comes together to praise God and to stand under God's word. And as we go our own ways, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, communion, fellowship with the Holy Spirit will be with us all today and forever. Amen.